Since the last harvest year, the price of a 90 kilogram bag of maize, Kenya's staple, has tripled to an average of 4,500 shillings, with the government being forced to zero rate import duty to tame the rise. Kenya's maize production in 2010 crop year was below average due to inadequate rainfall, leading to a shortfall in supply to meet domestic demand. Yes, maize, no maize, no food. But should that be the case? Reports that have been received from different parts of the country indicate that Kenya is now facing food deficits. What is the government doing, everybody asks. The government of Kenya, bilateral and regional organizations, NGOs and charitable organizations are implementing programs and projects aimed at reducing and eradicating hunger and malnutrition in the country. The Agricultural Sector Ministries of the Direct Responsibility for Food Availability, Distribution and Consumption. Our biggest role is advancing appropriate technologies for production which include planting materials and seed varieties that will be able to combat food insecurity. Land is important to the socio-economic and political development of Kenya. Land and environmental degradation is one of the most serious challenges currently affecting Kenya. Degradation is the result of inappropriate human activities coupled with natural processes, climate change and a decline in rainfall. And as we all know, over 80% of Kenya's land area is arid and semi-arid, as all. Therefore, secure land tenure, sustainable land use, contribute to food security and socio-economic development of a country. Conservation of soil is very important. Conservation of cultivated slopes, wetlands and water catchments are taught to farmers. Soil conservation on hilly arable lands by terracing and contour plowing are some of the production technologies. We are promoting drought-tolerant crops resistant to common pests and diseases. These broaden the food base and reduce over-reliance on maize. When you look around in literature and in practice, you find that most of the food security projects seem to focus more on the higher value uh, crops grown in breadbasket areas, the maize, the beans, the rice. But you notice that in situations of food vulnerability, most communities, most rural poor communities, do not necessarily consume the rice or the wheat. They consume locally available food uh, materials, the millets, the sorghum, the cowpeas, and such other materials. So this project is focusing on these other crops, the traditional high value crops, which are often also called orphan crops, to try and uh, deal with the food security, food insecurity vulnerabilities for poorer communities. We are emphasizing production and consumption of indigenous and traditional cereals, roots and tubers. However, technology does not stand alone as an enhancer of food security. Small-scale farmers who make up to 80% of the farmers who contribute to 70% of Kenya's agricultural production are also resource poor. The sector has provided loans through commercial banks and grants by programs like Njamarufuku Kenya, NMK, and NAYAP. Boosting the livestock kept by farmers is a key component of the sector's activities. While exotic breeds are delicate, more costly to keep, many farmers have adopted the upgrading of local breeds of cattle, goats, and poultry. The assholes are rich, endowed with natural resources, especially the meat, honey, and emerging livestock.
the pastoral communities have been taught to diversify in terms of livestock production. Communities that originally kept cows and goats have been introduced to camels. As land holding becomes smaller and smaller, rabbits and poultry are becoming popular with farmers. A kilo of rabbit meat sells at between 300 to 500 shillings, besides improving food security at domestic level. The dairy goat can supply a family with daily requirements of milk and it doesn't need a big area to keep it. Vaccination and treatment is an ongoing process. By development of vaccines, we ensure the livestock are kept healthy. One of the major projects currently being undertaken is eradication in tsetsefly infected areas to allow for keeping and rearing of livestock and growing of food crops. This is being undertaken by Patek. With the establishment of disease-free zones, we ensure optimum production of livestock and livestock products for quality and adequate food to the populace. During drought, pasture is affected and animals die due to lack of feed. Farmers are being taught to conserve the feed in different ways. Fish stocks in the various capture fisheries have been on a declining trend due to overfishing and use of illegal fishing gear. The government, through the Economic Stimulus Program, ESP provided funds to the Ministry of Fisheries Development to increase production in fish farming, lake and dam fisheries. 27,000 fish ponds have been constructed in 140 constituencies countrywide, stocked them with over 15 million fingerlings, increasing the area and aquaculture from 722 hectares to 20,000 hectares. Integration of fish farming with livestock farming in Assal region will ensure diversification, provide food of high nutritional value for households, increase their income and become better able to withstand shocks. It decreases the risk to production, increases farm sustainability and in general boosts rural development. One of our core mandates is to conserve and harvest available water resources for efficient utilization in the Assal and other marginal districts in order to increase land productivity. We are making a dam here. I'll have a, a cut off the other water from there. With the, combined with the cultivation. You see, that cultivation is beautiful. We are rehabilitating and reclaiming degraded and wastelands as well as managing of surface runoff to reduce frequent occurrence of floods. <laughs> Development of more irrigation schemes will also ensure food security. A success story of the Tunnel Delta. Ndiyo hivi naona serikali ya Kenya kama ina manufaa ardhi inapitisha maji Mombasa. Kule naitwa Afakana napitisha maji paka Mombasa. Hiyo ikifanywa kila maili tano ndemu, kila maili tano ndemu. Itaweza kufaitika. Maana yake mtu akipewa iko na mchanga na maji, yeye akikosa kulima si mtapeleka kotini kama India. Irrigation will include all forms of irrigation both small and large scale. Tunalima paipai, ndizi na embe. Sangine 
maji inakuwa kidogo ajili ya inji ndio inaharibika inja imekuwa nyingi sana lakini sisi tunalima ndio ajili kidogo watu wengine wana tunasaidiana hata sisi tutamsaidia wengine wanasikia nja ajili sisi tuko shamba ina inalima kila kitu hata watoto pia tunawatolea shule na vitu ya yote The greatest challenge facing Kenya's agricultural sector today is a dwindling forest and tree cover which plays a critical role in supporting agricultural productivity and food security. Considering that gazetted forests cover only 2%, all stakeholders have to rethink their strategies for increasing tree cover. We are currently implementing the Kenya Forest Service Sustainable Livelihood Development Project in the Mau Forest Complex. The project has exposed farmers to alternative livelihood strategies aimed at alleviating destructive activities in the natural forests. This project is providing small loans through Equity Bank Limited to smallholder farmers to invest in forestry-related enterprises micro-enterprises and agricultural projects promoting sustainable alternative livelihoods. Through some of our initiatives, farmers sometimes produce more than they can consume at home. By coming together as cooperatives, they're able to access markets, bargain for better prices and also have volumes that will attract the buyers. The cooperative sector plays a big role in organizing these farmers. For us to succeed on this journey, appropriate reforms with objective of enhancing growth will be provided. As we celebrate the World Food Day, we need to work together as the agricultural sector ministries for Kenya to achieve food security and success in the World Food Day celebrations. We invite all our stakeholders to walk with us for a food secure Kenya. We can do it.